Hey everybody, just want to spread the news that Sumuri has just released version 9 of Paladin, their bootable forensic Linux distro that's used for data acquisition and analysis. My main use for Paladin has been to use it to boot a target machine that you want to acquire if you don't want to remove the hard drive from the machine. I also use the triaging feature to create word lists and then search through the target drive. And with this new version, they have added a boatload more analysis tools for all types of forensics. Computer forensics, mobile forensics, vehicle forensics, memory forensics, network analysis, password recovery, and way more. The great news is that Paladin 9 is still free for non-commercial usage, but you can certainly donate money to Sumuri for their efforts and help out the community. And even if you're going to use it for commercial purposes, they're only asking for a mere $25. And that's an extreme bargain for what you get. A drawback for this new release is that the ISO is a whopping 13 gigabytes in size compared to the 2 gigs that was in the version 8. So that means you can't keep using that 4 gig USB thumb drive you've had since 2010. You've got to update yourself to at least a 16 gig USB. Although Paladin does a good job at not loading the entire ISO into memory, as my VM is only using about 2.5 gigs, and my computer is using about 3 gigs. One feature that Sumiri touts is that with version 9, you can create persistent storage on your boot device. What that means is that you can save your configurations, notes, case files, etc. So that when you reboot, those files are still on the USB, and you don't have to restart from scratch after each reboot. You do have to build the USB in a different way, which I can create a video for if anybody is interested. Just leave a comment below. Straight from the grub onwards, they have a new look and some interesting additions. I noticed that the grub menu is slightly different when I boot Paladin from a physical machine versus when I boot it from a virtual machine. The physical machine shows me more options like boot from next volume and then UEFI firmware settings. So it looks like you can select the boot from next volume and then boot from the other drives that you have connected. And you can select UEFI firmware settings to get into change the UEFI firmware if you want to. Interesting options which I didn't see when I booted up the VM. Once Paladin 9 fully boots, there is a message panel that tells you that sound and networking are disabled. This is very useful for those who like it quiet when they work. And also, you probably want to control the networking aspect if you are going to be doing frenzy key things on the target computer. Another major change to highlight is that version 9 is now using Ubuntu 24.04, running on Linux kernel 6.8. So they're very up to date with the latest tools and drivers. It also supports Secure Boot, so it runs on BIOS that have Secure Boot enabled. I did try it on a Dell with Secure Boot enabled, and Paladin 9 booted just fine, which is awesome because I didn't have to mess with the BIOS settings. There are a ton of analysis tools now available, starting with Autopsy version 4.22, which is on the toolbar on the left. Make it easy. And then if you go through the menu down here, you can see the slew of analysis tools. Um, and they group them in categories, so you have things like Apple Forensics. And so here, notably, you have APFS Fuse, so you can get Mac APFS support. Scrolling through here, you get all these other categories of tools. The interesting one here is Imaging Tools. We see that they have Gimager, and this is one of the fastest imaging software around. So I find it super useful. And then uh, they have Memory Forensics with Volatility 3. And looking at Mobile Forensics, they have new stuff like the Leap tool, some Alexis Brignoni and company, as well as the iDevice tools. Samuri continues to put development efforts into Paladin and resulting in a beautiful release of version 9. It uses a LTS version of Ubuntu supporting Secure Boot and comes wrapped with a ton of open source forensic tools. And of course, the price is right. So here are a couple of minor issues that I ran into and how I fixed them. When I booted the Paladin USB on a Dell XPS laptop, I ran into a display problem. As you can see here, there's uh, just these little dots that run everywhere when you're moving the mouse. So that's obviously a problem. 
So I booted again with the node mode set boot option and then all was fine. The other little issue I had was when I booted to a VM. The VM kept on shutting down by itself within a few minutes and I couldn't figure out why. So I started experimenting with changing the RAM and when I went from 16 gigs to 8 gigs, it seems to be uh, stable and I never encountered any problems since. And so what I figured out is that when the VM was set to 16 gigs, it basically took up the entire memory space for uh, my host. And so it basically shut down the Paladin VM. But when I went to only 8 gigs, there was still run room for the, for the host to operate. So it was fine. What I didn't quite understand was, you know, it appeared that Paladin was only using about 2.5 to 3 gigs of memory but I guess it was caching the rest of it. And so it, it was actually using up all 16 gigs um, that I gave it. So that's why it crashed. But anyhow, um, once I set to eight gigs, it was fine. And lastly, here are a couple of suggestions for future releases. Number one, now that the tool is becoming an analysis tool, can Sumuri create a simple way to install the distro to a hard drive so I can boot it from the computer instead of a thumb drive? A lot of bootable OSs include a shortcut on the desktop that says, you know, install the drive. I understand that in this case, it may cause confusion to some users who may inadvertently install Paladin to the evidence uh, hard drive. But maybe you can only have that capability in the non-forensic mode. Number two, the tools menu looks very pretty, but can I have a version that I can use with just arrow keys instead of the mouse, which uh, works a lot faster for me? And then also sometimes when I boot up target machines, the touchpads don't work as great as I like them to be. So using the arrow keys is definitely the preferred method for getting to the menus. Number three, since only three gigs is loaded into memory, maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, but maybe having a version of the Paladin ISO that is just the minimal size one needs for the acquisition tool, and then call that the Live Boot Edition and then have another edition of the ISO for analysis and call that the analysis edition. Just a thought. For more information on another Linux forensic distro named Kane, watch these videos here. Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.